go ahead and start recording. So we've also got Lori joining us. And Lori, uh, I believe it's from McIntosh County. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, okay. that's correct. Great. And Emily, my notes. Oh, let's see. We got Kidder County. I think we just talked earlier today. We were having a little trouble getting on. But uh, we got Emily from Kidder County. And then Aaron, I can't read my sloppy writing. Is that Botno? Yep, I'm up in Botno. Uh, and your family and community wellness? Correct. Great. So we got a little uh, mix of everything here, some um, admins and also FCW2 and then plant pathology. So uh, main thing is we're all working in the Ag CMS, which is uh, just short for a content management system. And it used to be years ago that you had to be a very brainiac uh, web developer to make web pages. Well, a content management system uh, makes it a lot easier for the layperson without a lot of uh, HTML experience to go out and make web pages. So basically, that's what an egg CMS is. And um, also, I know a lot. Some of you are seasoned staff. A lot of you are new staff. Out of that 17 I, I sent, I think uh, about 15 of them were brand new. So it's exciting to have a lot of new people on board. Everyone seems to be uh, gotten into Skype okay, so that's good. We might be some struggling on the back end that might join us in a little bit. So that's great. We like to see uh, everybody adopt the technology as it's available. And I don't know how it is out there, but Fargo's experienced a really snowy day yet again. So a day that we don't have to be traveling on the road. And uh, we can do meetings and trainings from the comfort of our own office. So, um, were all of you uh, able to get into your uh, website following the instructions I sent? Or, or I guess I should say, did anyone have trouble getting in? And even if you haven't had a chance to go in there and sort of po poke around, um, if you ever have trouble with Egg CMS, remember that Bob and I are here to answer your questions, to train you, to support. This is more of just kind of a, uh, just demoing some basic things, having a quick conversation, seeing what other people are doing and how they're using Egg CMS, seeing if they're running into maybe the same um, questions or um, difficulties that you might be having. So I think all of you do have a Egg CMS login. Right now I just have <clears throat> our generic Egg Content Management System page pulled up just for training purposes. And uh, hopefully you can all see that. I'm sharing it uh, on my desktop through the Skype app here. And basically what our Egg CMS page is, uh, we're all under Egg CMS. That's just basically a tool to use the websites. Uh, but You'll probably note that a lot of the pages look a lot different. Um, we leave the creativity up to people who own the program or the county. We don't have a centralized uh, method to say everyone's website should look like this. Uh, we don't control it. We, we figure that people in the departments and counties know what their customers are looking for, so we sort of leave it up to you. And again, we're here to support you and try to make your web page do what it needs to do, uh, whether you're in... Um, plant pathology or out in Botano County. So right here, uh, Egg CMS, the structure of our page is very simple um, and just sort of, it's kind of anatomy of our web pages in Egg CMS. I'm logged in, so we've got that green edit bar towards the top and it, um, you have tabs for contents that'll give you everything that's on your website, whether it's folders or pages or files or images, that's all going to be under that contents tab and I can quick sneak under there real quick. So basically this is all the stuff that's on your website and you'll see here it's a, I have a variety of uh, images folder, here's where all, all the pictures or sometimes I use logos. I can stick that in an images folder. There's typically a documents folder. Um, a lot of people put flyers and uh, Word documents and so forth in a documents folder. You can link uh, straight to other websites. That's what this one down here is. It looks like a little globe icon here. And so that's just some of the stuff in our egg CMS folder. And again, these options, you always know you're logged in. You can see your name here in the upper right. You'll be logged in. And you'll see this green edit bar. The public is not going to see that. You as an editor are um, only going to see that. Also, you may be asking, what's all that red stuff? Over here on the left, that's called the navigation. And this is, again, um, the things that are on your website. 
So anything in red is something we can see as an editor in AgCMS. The public does not see that because right now it looks pretty messy and way too long. But be assured that the public won't be seeing that. And I just have a lot of testing stuff over here. I guess I could clean it up. But basically, the public's only going to see like these first few items that are in black. Now the way we have our uh, web page uh, structured is uh, this middle content here in the middle of the page. We used to do a lot of blogging when we were doing a lot of um, AgCMS uh, technical updates and so forth. Um, so this is just blog style content and you can see it's a little bit dated. We're looking at what four and a half years here. Um, and those were just some news items that we used in a blog uh, format. Um, over on, you'll also notice too in AgCMS, the current design, um, usually on the left side we've got the navigation, um, the center, uh, uh, center aisle, if you will. You can do a lot of different things there. You can put pictures, and again, in our case, we've done the blog-like uh, format. And over here is the uh, sort of the right side of your web page. And these different things, there's a few items here. We've got about the egg CMS, which just sort of describes what this is about and for contact information. Then we got a section on logins. So somebody like Barbara would be um, logging under the academic site instance of egg CMS because that's part of academic sites for plant pathology. While most of you probably going to go under uh, county extension sites. But we too do have a couple other ones, like for um, the research extension centers, they have what we call their own instance. And anything that doesn't fit into those three categories is going to be dumped into topic and other sites. And I can even show you what that looks like because we've got hundreds and hundreds of websites. Okay, still wants me to keep going to the county one, so we're going to stick there. But basically that top and in other sites, that's got everything from our lawns, gardens, and trees to upcoming, uh, might be like a annual workshop. It's got nourishing boomers. It's got all kinds of crazy things in there. So we do have four instances of egg CMS, but for most of you, at least the ones that are on this call, pretty much going to be concentrating on county extension sites with the exception of Barbara, who will uh, be working on the academic sites. So another item I have in what we call the portlet area, or you can do this by portlets, uh, we have, uh, I've embedded our AgCom uh, Facebook page here. So yes, in case you don't already follow us, please go out and give our Facebook page a like. Uh, we just try to post tech tips out there and so forth. And it's always a good idea. I, I think most of you already have a business page. Uh, for your county site or maybe it's your a lot of our departments and RECs have their own sites too. It's always a good idea to sort of cross reference any social media you have. It's just not um, limited to Facebook. Go back to your web page, add that information there. You might be um, gaining some new followers there. And likewise on uh, any social media page you have, point them back to your website. It's another way to cross uh, promote your website and your social media. I also, what I did is uh, embedded some, um, we do a lot of YouTube videos for training, and I know in that original email I sent you, uh, we did have um, AgCMS Part 1 and Part 2 trainings that were our each on YouTube, and so I just added, I embedded a, a YouTube playlist here, and um, please know you can have the ability to do that too. So speaking of portlets, what is a portlet? Those are, uh, there's a lot of flexibility in what you can do with these, and that's again what sort of goes on your right side of the page or your left side of the page. Now some options here, um, we don't use all these but for the most part if you have a lot of events um, in your county or in your department, events, <coughs> excuse me, we can put an events portlet on your page. Excuse me and that's got the ability um, if you've ever clicked on one of our events, it can go right onto your Outlook can calendar, makes it really handy there. And for anyone who might be interested in attending your events, uh, we also talked about that Facebook like box that's available. You can do it for your other social media too. We just have one specific for Facebook. Um, some of the ones that navigation is already on your website. That was what was on the left hand side. That's how you get around on your website. That's what people see as a menu. Um, to checking out your website. News Portlet, um, 
you probably know that we put out a lot of news releases here per week in AgCom on a variety of subjects. And if you want to add a news portlet to your website, you certainly can do that. We set it up on the back end. So as they're released, they automatically get um, updated to your website. All right. Just uh, I think there was a few, oh, quick upload portlet. This is kind of interesting. If you have a site that has a lot of pictures, let's say it's after the county fair or when I was working with the integrated um, pest management team, they did weekly photos of uh, bugs in the field, if you will. So they had to upload a ton of photos in the summer each week. And so with this quick upload portlet, it gives you the opportunity to upload a bunch of um, pictures at once versus one by one. So in the future, if you get a lot of uh, pictures from an event or a training or something, and you want a quick way to upload them all ver uh, versus just one by one, you can use that quick upload portlet. Um, I do have documentation on how to use that, but again, Bob and I are here um, if you have any questions, if you prefer to walk, I can walk you through things. You don't have to, I'm not just going to send you a link and say, <laughs> run with it. We are here to support you, so please keep that in mind. This static text portlet, this is probably what's mostly used. It gives you so much flexibility because it's just like when you make a page, uh, page in Egg CMS. You'll notice these three lines of icons here. A lot of them look like uh, what's in a Word document, everything from functions of bolding something to alignment to bullets or numbering. Um, you can add pictures, you can add links and so forth. So it gives you a lot of flexibility here. I see a lot of times people here, if they've got a new program in their county, they might highlight it with a graphic identifier or logo. And that kind of um, brings attention to um, the new program in their community. Any questions about portlets in Egg CMS? I have a quick question. Yes. Um, I, I'm i just, of course, kind of trying to do some things. This sure. is Aaron, by the way. Yes. Um, of course, I'm just kind of trying to tinker with stuff as you're speaking. Okay. Um, so I just quickly added, like, the quick Facebook link portlet on the um, right side of my screen. Is that similar, then, to, like, files and everything where you have to... I just I'm, I have it open on just a regular website and refresh, and it's not showing. So is that one of those things you have to make from private to I'm, I'm just not seeing it on our website yet and I think I added it correctly oh okay so let's go take a look sometimes when we're working with web browsers because egg CMS it does work through the web uh, web sometimes we need to clear our cache or refresh the web page so okay. um, can you try doing um, like a F uh, the F5 key on your keyboard, it's towards the top. That should refresh your page for you. Uh, hmm. I just don't see it on the general website yet, but I see it on my, oh. of course, through the Egg CMS under like, contents and view. Do you see? I just pulled it up, Erin. For Botano right. County, I'm seeing it. Okay. Oh, that's odd. Okay. You know well, what? I, I bet it's just a caching <laughs> issue. Okay. Um, if I you won't. if you continue if you continue not to see it, uh, here's what we always say in tech support, right? Log back out, log back, log in, back and in, it should look fine. But <laughs> sure. if you still are experiencing errors with that, um, give me a call and we can figure out. Sometimes you have to clear your cookies too. Sure. So. Well, as long as you're seeing it, that um, that's yes. fine with me. I just wanted to make sure that it, you know it looked updated in the active you know editing CMS website. But when I was comparing it to, of course, just the general population sure. website, it didn't look so great. That works. Sure. Thank you. Absolutely. So here is again a shameless plug. We do have our Eggcom Web Services page. Um, on Facebook and whenever you uh, visit any page uh, in the about section here it's a good idea to link right back to um, your website too because again it's just kind of cross uh, marketing or so your Facebook people can see your web page and your web uh, visitors can go out to your social media and get a chance to uh, further engage so just know that that's a thing uh, that you can do too all right, 
shameless, shameless plug, I'll make it easy for you. If you want to follow us on Facebook, please feel free to do that. And, all right, let's get back to Egg CMS. Um, All right, so it's a good idea whenever you make um, updates to your website, it's always a good idea to uh, maybe go out to a different browser or get a new tab open. Make sure that your changes were saved and that it looks right. Um, also, I want to let you know that our web pages are uh, mobile friendly. Um, what we, they are what we call responsive. So no matter if you're looking at, let's say, the Bot Botano County website, whether you're on a laptop or an iPhone or an iPad, Android phone, whatever, that um, that the design will be resized to fit the device. So um, if you haven't already, go on your phone or if you have a tablet, go and see what your uh, website looks like on different devices and everything should um, translate over to fit just fine and work just fine depending on the device if anything looks goofy just give us a heads up we're always testing things out but Rogers our uh, developer and he does very very good work so um, but it's always a good idea to see uh, go out there and see what it looks like on different devices and um, I've been here since 2012 and not a lot of people had a smartphone back then and we look at our Google Analytics or um, you know how people are using our websites and um, the numbers have shot up dramatically. I mean, everybody's got a phone in their pocket nowadays, so it's really important to keep that in mind. So just know that our pages are responsive to different devices. All right, so we just took a little tour. I don't think we have anything else here on the Egg CMS page. I just did the YouTube videos, some social media. We have logins. Again, every, um, every site's gonna look a little bit differently because what's important in let's say Williams County is not important in Adams County um, they look alike in the sense that um, you know you may ask well why do our web pages look the way they do because we do get complaints about they're ugly they're old and so forth but I'll give you a little background story here um, we get our design from University Relations, that is NDSU University Relations. They hand down the branding and the templates to us. Yes, they've done a major redesign. So we have two with our level one pages, but we're still not there at this level. We're still kind of using the old design. But we have the um, things that need to be in place. Uh, we've got the green header towards the top here with the NDSU uh, logo. And it's also got links to different um, things at NDSU as well because we are an, an NDSU organization. At the bottom is a, a branded footer that we got from them and I would ask all of you too um, since staff does change go to the bottom of your site and in the lower right there see who your site manager is. Um, if you've had a lot of turnover in your area it could be that an outdated name is there and we can certainly update that for you that's not something you're able to do uh, with your login but just notify me or Bob and we can definitely uh, get that uh, changed for you as well but we've also got um, this Creative Commons statement here we've got uh, just general um, links to search and our privacy statement and a directory as well. These are just things that NDSU University Relations says we must have on our website to make sure it's accessible and so forth. So those are kind of the backbones of that. Also too I wanted to point out we've added this Google custom search. Um, so if people, I mean we have so much information and extension. Um, just with our hundreds of websites you know we're dealing with agriculture, we're dealing, um, dealing with uh, you know de rural development and youth development. We've got all kinds of things going on. So custom search, if you're not sure where to find it, uh, we do have that available. That's pulled right from Google, but it just searches our sites uh, for the information you're looking for. So that's kind of a major part of our egg CMS as well. All right, any questions about our egg CMS page or any volunteers? Can we go in and sneak in and take a look at any pages or are there any changes that anyone has made recently that they would like to show?
Anyone want to chime in? Otherwise, I can pick on a different county or something. <laughs> well, I was just going to say I was going to request some assistance, so that would this could maybe work. Um, I've been doing a couple just things on our Bono County site, just kind of here and there. Um, I'm just wondering, and I probably missed it, um, but I have a couple pages okay. that I would like to move into a folder. Okay. Um, if that's something that we can make possible. Um, yes, let me get there. I don't know if it's going to boot. Yeah, I got to log in real quick. So let me go. Um, again, if you ever want to log into XCMS, I have this bookmark. I mean, however you want to do it, but I got a content management system. I'm going to go over to county extension sites. And what's nice about the Firefox browser, and I hope you're using that with XCMS, Chrome works pretty well with it too. Um, and the other one, Edge, Microsoft Edge, formerly known as Internet Explorer, probably works the least best, but it's definitely doable. It's just that um, our preferred browser is Firefox. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to go find Botno County, and then I'm going to go into this Contents tab here. Or Aaron, like you said, is there something in particular, like... Um, I Well, I just kind of wanted to clean up you know, on the left, I feel like there's quite a bit in that kind of that navigation. I would like to get the my diabetes prevention program page, my field to fork, as well as the nourishing boomers pages, all under food, nutrition, and health. Oh, okay. So you can definitely do that. Okay. I'm just taking a look at what um, what is currently there. So if I click on um, diabetes prevention program, this looks like a web page that they did. Sometimes, again, things can be just a document. It might be a link to an outside source. Um, Field the Fork, I believe that that goes. Oh, okay, this is specific to Botno County. Oh, okay, you already did that one up too. So, yeah, you can definitely take that information and condense it into food, nutrition, and health. You can add those things, and I'll even give you a tip. Um, hopefully not getting too technical here, but let's say you want to move this diabetes prevention program. Um so this on this all these icons here again they kind of look like word icons if you go to the bottom one and the second to last one is a HTML button this brings up the actual code or what's on the back end remember when I talked about web developers this is how they used to do websites mm -hmm. well we can kind of cheat and what you can do is you can copy all that code and then what you can do is you can drop it into this food nutrition and health page you just go to edit and then again, if you were to take that HTML button, you could just uh, put your cursor down here, paste it in, and that diabetes stuff is going to be brought right over with all, without all the hassle of you re-uploading the logo and then adding, uh, retyping that information. Okay. And the links and everything will copy. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. So that yeah. So that's kind of nice. Great. Yeah, I'll tinker with that. Yeah. And, you know, it's always a good thing, too. You know, right now we're talking about how to do things in AGCMS, you know, like click on here or click on that. Uh, but overall, take a step back and look at the content that's on your website. Is it up to date? Um, is it missing something? Maybe you're getting a lot of calls at your office about something, but you have nothing to point people to. Uh, maybe you need to make an addition to your website. Google always loves it when um, websites change. Uh, they they consider that to put you in higher search results and so forth, but it's good to do like a content audit. See what's out there. Um, is, is the program still running? Are the links still working? Is this still the right contact person and so forth? Um, you'll notice that with a lot of the county pages, um, a lot of them, well, I think all of them do now. We never used to, but our former, uh, one of our former assistant directors had made it a point after some SBEAR meetings um, that people were having a hard time finding out how to contact people out in the county offices. So we led something last year and worked with uh, county admin staff to make sure there's a contact button uh, here so people are easily reachable. And, and it looks different. Again, every county has a different flavor, if you will. We even have the option. You can even insert a directory, um, and it'll pull um, the most recent people as – um, as they're brought on board or whether they leave the organization it'll update by itself 
um, that is available as well. So that's kind of nice. But um, some people add pictures. I think it's Sargent County. It's always kind of nice to add a put a picture um, with the people here. I worked with uh, Melissa, Cindy, and Candy. They wanted something um, to stick out on their website too. I just did a simple graphic in Canva. I don't know if any of you guys have used that before. Um, some people use uh, some graphics, uh, graphic design on their phone too. So it's always nice to put a face uh, with a name, whether it's on the web and so forth. So should we? Did you have any more questions about um, when you were going through your Botno County site, Erin? Um, I guess those were kind of my main items. Okay. Um, just kind of trying to, yeah, just like update stuff and. Right. And I've you been guys... kind of digging through other counties to kind of see like what they have and sure, you know absolutely. what you know looks good and and whatnot. But right, and I think you guys right here, you guys do a nice job. It's always nice to add photos showing what you're doing out out in the counties, and you know you're showing different activities here. So I think that's great. Um, Becky, our director, her pet peeve is when people put their co county courthouse on there. She always says. A courthouse did not show the work extension does in the county. But then again, we don't live in the counties. Maybe the county courthouse is a big thing in your area. I don't know. But <laughs> just saying, if you have a picture of your courthouse, she might come after you someday. So, All right. Um, anyone else want to take a look at their websites? Or do you want me to poke around in some other ones? Or it, or are you wondering how to do something in particular in Egg CMS? You want me to demo anything? With some of you being newer staff, um, do you know if you your name has been added to your website? So that's something we could work on right now that I could demo. I wasn't sure. And I don't want to really pick on anyone. I'm not trying to pick on anyone. I was just wondering if anybody might any if anybody knows offhand that something needs to be updated on their website, we can work on it right here and now and other people can see um, watch the demo too, if there's anything. Well, you can try Macintosh County. Okay. I'm pretty sure I'm new to this, so okay. I'm pretty sure we haven't done any updates there. All right. So I'm gonna log in, go to Macintosh. All right. So again, you'll know that I'm logged in. Here's my name in the upper right. Here's that green edit bar. People are not gonna see that. So what do you think about uh, Lori when you're taking a look at this? I mean, you guys got a lot of stuff going on, right? Yeah. So, I mean, again, you do a nice job here. You're, you know, you're showing different aspects that you're working with youth in the community. Of course, eggs in there, too, so it's always nice to have pictures. You make it very clear that this is how to contact us. You've got, uh, well, Crystal's on there. You're so new, we're not even on yet, huh? Is uh, Crystal yeah, the only one the there? Last... Okay. Uh, there was a gal before, but... Um... Yeah, I've just started within the last month, so I've just basically, I guess, so you know where I'm at, I've just gone through those tutorials that you emailed oh, out, okay. but I have not tried to do much as far as changing anything until I kind of got the feel of what this was all about. So sure. uh, I've gone in and looked at things, but I haven't really done much with any editing or changing. Okay. So. Well, yeah, if we could just use Macintosh County as an example here. Um, I, I, I'm just going to the footer because I know that uh, you're a new staff person. Right now it looks like it's just a generic. It goes to Macintosh County extension. So I think probably you and Crystal have access to that. So sometimes people, when they can't find out how to figure out how to get a hold of somebody, they'll click on this. But I think that you guys have it set up on the back end that that will go to your email. So um, that looks like that's up to date. Okay. Okay, so we see there's a lot going on in Macintosh County. Um, I would just maybe, and Crystal's really on top of things, but, um, you know, just go through your navigation. Are these, um, are all these programs or links, are they all current? If not, we can um, 
unpublish them or so forth. I know she's got a lot going on with Annie's project. I don't know if that's necessarily in McIntosh County, but I would just, you know, have you and Crystal sit down or ask her to review all this stuff because it is kind of a lot. Maybe you do have that much going on in McIntosh County. I'm not sure, but it's a good Thank idea you. to do that. But in looking in the center um, area here, um, since Crystal's name is only on there, we can add you. And so I'm in here. I clicked edit. And basically what you do in this text editor box, what we can do is we can um, just, it's just like typing in a Word document basically. So what we could do here, um, I'm just going to type in, Oh, whoop, Lori. And then, what is your title, Lori? I am um, administrative um, assistant. So I'm just typing in here, and let's see. I'm assuming your email is Lori dot Gropper. Is it Gropper, by the way? It's Long O, but Groper, yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry about and that. Yes, that. That's correct on the email address. Okay, so notice, okay, um, you might be asking, why is this why is this font bigger than this font? It's because Crystal wanted it to stand out. You'll notice here in this um, drop down here, this is a subheading size, so it just kind of stands out. But this we're just going to make normal size, and sometimes this can be a little touchy in XMS. See now the whole thing. Um, sometimes when you do a lot of formatting, it can act up. So I'm just going to go on the back end, and you don't have to worry about this. If you ever have trouble and you're beating your head against the wall about why won't this formatting stick, you just give me a call and don't waste your time. Okay. I'm just going to fix this on the back end, though. Um, oh, looks like I... Hold on. Yeah, okay. All right. Now, so I am just, looks like Crystal had centered the text, so we're just going to use that. Again, some of these icons look just like Word icons. So how do we make an email link? What you can do is highlight the text. We're going to go up to this little link box up here. It says er, um, insert and edit link. And you can either link <clears throat> to actual things in your website, whether it's a picture or a document. We want to actually use this email function here. And so we're going to put in Lori's email. I got that right, right, Lori? Yep, that's okay. correct. So now you'll see that the, it changed. So now, and I'm going to save here. And again, I always like to go out and check my work. And here's Lori's name that's now added to it. So now when people come to Macintosh County website, they'll know that they can talk to either Lori or Crystal. So if you are a new staff person, um, maybe your admin assistant does do this for you, or maybe you want to add it yourself. Again, try and get your name out there, especially if you're a new staff person. It's as simple as doing that, just typing in, maybe, maybe changing the formatting a little bit, and then adding e any email links. Great. Well, thank you very Absolutely. much. Absolutely. Yep. So, and again, just using McIntosh County as an example, I see there's a lot of logos here. And again, that's um, how you use that static text por uh, portlet. And I love this because, I mean, obviously there's a lot going on in the county. But here's all, okay, I guess we're supposed to call them graphic identifiers, <laughs> formerly known as logos. But anyway, so look... Um, Anytime you need a logo, if you have trouble finding it, give someone an egg call, a com, we can de uh, a call, we can definitely find it for you. So she's got all these things listed out about all the things going um, in McIntosh County, and it just makes it a little bit more visual pleasing. People are very much visual learners. We're getting lazy nowadays. We don't like to read text. We like to go for that graphic. So I think this is great that they've used so many graphic identifiers. And maybe um, in McIntosh County, uh, publications are really important. Um, you give it prominent space up here where maybe these are some of the top requested ones or maybe these are the calls that Lori's getting called about 
mostly, so put them out on your website, maybe save you a few calls, or you're able to send somebody uh, directly to a link where they can access those uh, publications. And again, what is important in McIntosh County might not be as important in, let's say, Kidder County, too. So every website has their own flavor. Um, here uh, is actually a news portlet. They call it the latest info, and that's one of those portlets I showed you that, again, any time um, AgCom releases a news release, it's going to feed right into your website. So it had all kinds of information, and that's a variety of information here. We've got Prairie Fair, which is uh, Julie Garden Robinson, uh, and then we got some egg releases here too. So that's what they did there. Any questions about how maybe Macintosh County went about with their website or how to's? All right. Okay, Barbara, I'm not picking on you, but this is a little different since we're dealing with mostly county people here. Let's take a look at how plant pathology might look a little different, if I can spell. So, Barbara, is this the website that you're dealing with? Is this the right one? Do you know? Oh, okay. Yep, so there so plant pathology and academic sites might look a little different because they basically have a different audience. Uh we're talking um, you know, trying to recruit students, trying to please alum uh alumni and uh so forth. This is very student based. So you'll see that it does look a little bit different because their target audience does tend to be different. Um, here is specifically extension path plant pathology. So now it's starting to look maybe a little bit more like a uh, egg CMS site. Um, again, they, they've listed their crop and pest report for social media and some of their newest publications here too. Since they're dealing specifically with plant pathology, um, they chose to highlight their publications uh, by what's been newly released. So keep that in mind that although they kind of look alike with the same header and footer, kind of like the same design, um, you guys are serving almost different uh, customers here or uh, audiences. And I don't know if I need to point this out or not, but um, the four H pages, they are actually not in Egg CMS for whatever reason. They are in the university's um, content management system. It's typo 3. You probably don't need to know that. This is way before my time that I came here. Um, but for whatever reason, uh, you'll notice their website. Our websites are always going to start off with ag.ndsu.edu. Uh, they go right to ndsu.edu slash 4H. So they're a little bit different. Um, they might have some different functionality than us. To me, I think they look a lot alike. But um, And you can always link out to this 4-H page, too. Or some counties tend to like to have their own county-specific 4-H page because it is so important to their community. Oh, by the way, here's a tip, too. Um, if you're ever looking for uh, one of our websites, um, a lot of people tend to, uh, that I've seen, go to the NDSU homepage, then they go to like the directory, and then they have to look it up that way, which is a huge time suck. So here's a tip for you. Since our um, URLs do start with ag.ndsu, if, if I want to get quickly to a website, I just usually do NDSU, ag, and then whatever I'm uh, looking for. In this case, I'm going to go right to our extension page. So you will note, we have went through a recent design last fall. So our new home pages design uh, looks a lot different from what we're dealing with, what um, your sites are third level pages. And yes, we are working on getting those updated too. Unfortunately, it's going to be some time before um, those plans are nailed down and, uh, and a design is released. Um, so if you ever get confused about, well, why does the extension homepage look so different from, you know, our 
third level pages that is the reason why these are just basically stepping stones we just take it there's like 12 program areas we call them bubbles as they are represented here um, so if we just uh, take a look at the crops page the way we outlined it as a main story area here we've got tabs for topics programs publications and connect again that important thing about who to contact if people want to get a hold of you again we offer you flexibility over here on the resources page they have um, some flexibility uh, for instance for the crops people they have a lot of apps out there so they wanted to highlight those apps there and so yes it does look a little bit differently new design is on the horizon but not for some time unfortunately um, again we've made Google custom search very prominent here how to contact us um, there's a menu with all kinds of information here as well. Uh, we also placed uh, importance on news, so that's always featured here on the NDSU um, extension page. Any question about the new design or opinions? Any thoughts on, I mean, I, this has been out since last fall actually, but we're just starting now. I think we're going to target county sites next. So we're just starting now to take a look at what that should look like. And again, we're getting direction from SBEAR. Uh, so we're trying to take that into consideration. All right. Any other pages people would like to take a look at? Um, I have a question. Mm -hmm. So, um, I was just trying to like update some like upcoming events and everything. Okay. For the Adams County page. Okay. Um, and so I had two questions. So one is it's going to be a re we have a cooking class and it's going to take place for three consecutive weeks and everything. Mm -hmm. How could I specify that? So can you tell me like what the dates would be? Or oh, I see you did it towards the top here, right? Mm -hmm. So can you tell me what the dates would be? Or, or Yeah, it'll be March 5th, 12th, and 19th. Okay, so there are they three separate classes, right? Yeah. Okay, I think an easy way to do this, if we go into the contents and... Here's an events folder where you, um, oh, let's see. You might have them outside the folder, which is fine. It's all up to you. Um, and note, too, whenever you add something to Egg CMS, it's going to be the last thing to show. So I'm going to fast forward, or fast forward, is that right? Page two? There we go. Okay. So here's your quick and healthy cooking class. Within the event functionality, it doesn't really let you do a recurring item, but I have a short, um, but I do have a time saver for you. And this works with um, almost any item in Egg CMS. What we can do, here, let's see. Let me go up a level. Contents, page two. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a check mark. Uh, next to your event in Egg CMS and notice these buttons at the bottom there's several things you could do you can copy that you can cut it you can rename it you can delete it uh, change state means you want to unpublish it but basically what I would recommend um, again if you create one event there's not really a button you can mark that says recurring however you can copy the event so what you do is just uh, hit that button I click copy Got to go to page two again. Then I'm going to paste, and now we should have a duplicate of that on page two. And it default. And what you could do is you could just, um, if everything is the same, what you can do is just update the date on that. Do you think that would work for you? Sure. Yeah. Okay. If that's what you would recommend. Yes. And what's nice, uh, what I like about these event item types, uh, and you'll see, I don't know, how, do you guys use Outlook Calendar? Yeah. 
in your uh, job? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a total lifesaver for me because it pops up, you know, before I have a meeting. Um, it reminds me to do things. So what's nice is um, the functionality is built up in here. So when we look at this quick and healthy cooking class, let's say I'm interested in taking it. People have the option to, uh, they can download this to their online calendar. So whether, I think iCal is I, Apple products and B Calendar. Watch what happens when I click on it. Well, I think I have Outlook closed while I'm doing this training. Oh, here it's going to open. So what it does is it's going to put it right on my Outlook calendar. So it makes it super handy. Instead of somebody who might be interested in your class and they have to go write it down and then put it in their planner, here it is, boom, it's right there. So that's why I'm always a fan of that. What's also nice about that event item type in Egg CMS is that once the event um, where she has an upcoming events portlet here on the Adams County Extension site. Uh, once this March 5th class is done, it's automatically going to fall off the website. So it's not like Hannah will have to go in and delete the event. It's not like she has to manually manage that. It's going to um, disappear, if you will, all by itself. So any questions about events in Egg CMS? And again, you can see on her site, Adams County Extension, there's some red items over here. Well, we were working on those events, and if they're in red, it means they're unpublished. You can see it as an editor. The public can't. So sometimes people like to work on stuff without having to publish it. Oh, Hannah, by the way, is Leilani still there? I'm seeing her as site manager. She is not, so that will need to be updated. <laughs> okay, do you know who that should be? Should that be you, or? Um, for right now, it'll be me. Hopefully, okay. we have somebody else joining the office and helping me out. Okay. But... And I'm not sure how many, you know, it's not, I hope you don't get like 100 calls. I don't think you will, but it's nice to see. And look at, look, oh, Hannah, you did such a nice job. Look at that. Put... I love the pictures. That's great. It gives a nice uh, variety of what you do out in Adams County. You've got egg there. You've got, well, I don't know, crocus crops, if you will. Sorry. <laughs> um, and you got kids, youth development here. Nice picture of Hannah. People can put a name to a face like, oh, here we have a new agent in Adams County. Oh, that's what she looks like. It just kind of makes it more personable, if you will. Oh, you got a lot of events. Or, oh, you got uh, maybe... Let's see, I see you're experimenting with the events port, like, because it's at the top, and then over oh, here. Oh, that, okay. Yeah. I, I'm still, okay. I, I need, so I should get one of those deleted. Yeah, and there's one on the right side, too. Okay, so how do I go in and delete, and I have one over here on the left side. How do I delete some of these? Oh, sure. Which one do you want to delete? Um, I, oh, jeez, I have, like, four of them. Um, I want to keep probably the upcoming events that's on, like, the upper right-hand corner. Okay. I would say, and then, or is there a way for me to, like, can I move one of these upcoming events if I have, have a, a sidebar that people could click on? So, what do you mean sidebar? So, on the right, so I have a bunch of, like, in the red, it says events. Um, mm hmm is that a, technically like a folder? Yes. Like yep. And we, we can make that disappear if you want. Well, I don't think we necessarily have to do that. But, yeah, we can definitely, um, if that's where, if you see anything in your navigation that might be repetitive or you don't want to see it, uh, all you have to do is click on the item. And there's an option here. You go to edit and settings. And you can... Um, click uh, exclude from navigation that'll take it out of your navigation if, if there's anything out there that I call it dangling sometimes when people upload photos and it's not into the images folder it's kind of hanging out there so you can just simply click on whatever it is that you don't want to display there again click on edit then settings and you can check the box for exclude from navigation okay yeah So do you want to delete one of these portlets or? Yeah. Which yeah. one? Um, let's do this like top one right here. Okay. So you got one. We call this the middle central. Oh, what do you call? I don't know. Upper central events folder, if you will. 
So anytime you want to edit a portlet, just look for this little gray edit bar that's nearest to it. And um, you'll see here, here's her events folder um, that she created. What we can do is, I believe we can just, yeah, if we uh, hover over this X, we can just click on it and should remove it from there. Go back to the home page. It should be gone, which it is. Now we've got two in the right, and we've got one in the left. What's the next one, Hannah? Um, the one on the left we can get rid of, and then the one on like the bottom right. Okay. So again, I'm just going to click on uh, Manage Portlets. And her events is here. I'll click on that. Ooh, let's see here. Let me go back. All right, I'm just going to click on that X and save. Should be gone. Yes, it is. And then you said the bottom one here, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so manage portlets. I should explain too here. Um, whenever you see this yellow box and it says, you are managing the portlets of default view of a container. If you want to manage the portlets of a container itself, go here. Okay, what in the world does that mean? Basically, when you click on there, that portlet will display on every page of your website. Uh, some people might only want to display events for 4-H on their county 4-H site. And that, so that's what the option uh, for that is. But usually um, I've seen that most people with their portlets and their events, they want it to flow on each page of their website. So in that instance, you would click on the Go Here button. And if you ever have any questions about that, again, give Bob or I a call. So I'm going to... Um, remove the bottom one here. I'm going to save the setting, go back out to Adams County, and ta-da. Is that looking better? Beautiful. Okay. Do we decide about what's going on with those? Let's see. Two of Oh, are those? Let's take a look at that. So I think it's going to be on page two because those were recently added. Oh, okay. Events. Oh, okay, so I see here um, you have an events folder, an events page, and then the events themselves. Right. Okay. I don't think we really need the events page because each of these um, event item types are sort of treated as a page themselves. Okay. And what I would recommend, I'm just going to move these event item types. I'm going to check the box. I'm going to copy them. Got to go to page two to get a hold of that events folder. I'm going to go to the events folder and I'm going to paste those in there. So now we have an events folder with our events. Um, and I, let's see, I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know if those all needed to be published or if they need to, if you still need to update the dates yet. But let's see here. Let me go to page two again. And so I think I'm just going to delete this page since... They all kind of have their own page, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. I'm also going to delete these events because now they're sitting in the events um, folder. Don't worry. Again, i got to go to page two. Now, what I want to do, though, I want to publish this events folder. Otherwise, those are not going to display. And now I think for each of those... Oh, you already got them. Oh, yeah. You are cutting and pasting away, right? Okay. Thank you. Best learner. Ah, awesome. Okay, let me go back to those events because I don't know if, yeah, they're not displaying it. Okay, let's see. Let's go. And again, I'm going to mark all these. And this time I'm going to use change state and I'm going to publish them. And, oh, okay, so here, if we don't indicate a publishing date, it's automatically going to publish upon us hitting save. Um, for whatever reason, if you want it to expire, um, if you only want it to be shown for a certain time, you can certainly do that. I think I saw that what, one time with a county who was doing some sort of 4-H contest or something, and they wanted it to expire. I can't remember the details, but just to let you know that that information is available in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to publish those events, and now, okay, let me see if this is, okay, see, now that we have those uh, events, now we have them in this uh, portlet displaying here so people can see that there's um, cooking classes on different dates. So they're kind of recurring, just three separate items. Okay. Yeah, any questions about events or anything else? We've got about five minutes.
Oh, here's a good idea too. You know, basically anytime you make a change to your website, might be a good idea. I don't know if you have a social media strategy. Um, but uh, anytime, what I think you should do, anytime you make a change to your website, put it on your social media. So let's say Hannah just uploaded cooking classes. It's a great opportunity to head over to Facebook and go, hey, we just added um, cooking classes. And you could add a little snippet of it and so forth. And then she could um, not use this link because this is the logged in link. But if I were to go to the live website, um, and then events here, and then I could use this link to put on Facebook, and then you could uh, just direct people to um, the events that are going on here. So that's just a tip if you're looking for a Facebook post or, to, again, to sort of cross-market uh, things. All right. Are there any uh, any other things you'd like me to demo, or do you want to talk about maybe some changes you might have made to your website? All right. If uh, no more comments, I just want to leave you with again. If you um, get an idea and you're not sure how to do it, you get stuck on something please feel free to give Bob and I a call. That's why we are here to help you, uh, whether that's your website, social media, or marketing. Um, and you know that AgCom goes beyond that. We do printing, uh, mailing, and graphics. So please feel free to reach out to us. Thank you for joining today. I'll stay on for the remainder of uh, three minutes in case anybody has any questions. But thanks again for um, joining the training today. And for most of you, welcome to NDSU Extension. Thank you for your time today, Sonia. Absolutely. Yes, thank you.